Um, it is the top of the hour, so I'm going to go ahead and I guess start a slow introduction. For those of you that are on board here, I appreciate you for coming on board. This is Jeff Clark, Regional Director here at Golden Care USA. Um, we have a very special guest today. We have Mark Goldberg that's going to be presenting some pearls of wisdom for us in the LTC industry. Here's a guy that's got 32 years in the industry training top sales teams. Um, he's been around. If you, uh, He's been on different carriers advisory boards. He, like me, helps break down, compare, contrast, go through different long-term care company, uh, policies, products to help advise his agents as the best uh, route to go with them. Um, he helps build uh, an agency that's from 2004 to 2013, that basically doubled in size, the largest uh, consumer or career shop in long-term care, and one of the lead trainers there. Just a wealth of knowledge. Uh, he's been around a long, long time, a long-term care specialist, I like to call him a, uh, a long-term care ninja, basically. So lots of good points, lots of good takes on things. Um, so if you haven't heard before, it's a, it's, a, it's a great opportunity just to soak up some, some long-term care knowledge from a guy who's been around a long time. He's very good. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to you, Mark. And uh, we'll, we, got, we have a thing to do questions at the end. We can just kind of bring the questions out, and I'll, we'll go ahead and I'll, I'll read those and try to speak to them uh, and, and let Mark answer them, too, at the end. So go ahead, Mark. Um, uh, the stage is yours. Thank you, Jeffrey, and thank you to the entire Golden Care crew. It's my privilege to be here. Um, there's a that's me for those of you who don't know me, but um, again, it's been a, I've been around for a while, as Jeff says, and um, I was uh, uh, very much appreciative to be asked to uh, be part of this webinar series. I follow it myself. I watched the webinars. I, I watched the ones last week on how to pivot with Tom and. Um, several others over the years, so I am I'm 25 years plus uh, associated with the Golden Care people, and it's been a relationship I really treasure. So let me share with you what, uh, what brought all this about. I'm going to be glad to review everything with you and answer any of the questions you might have as, as we go through this, but it was in listening to the some of the past webinars that um, back in St. Martin in, in April, uh, Tom and I got into a conversation, and Jeff and I over the phone about some of the some of the things that it seems that pe people or specialists give lip service to being a long-term care specialist and an, an interviewer and a field underwriter. But when push comes to shove, especially when there's any kind of objection or any kind of pushback of any kind, they revert back to being a salesperson. And Long-term care, the reason I was attracted to it in 1991 when I started in this business, was that it's the most ideal product and the program that you can offer that allows you to truly be an interviewer, field underwriter. You can't sell long-term care. I mean, I'm, I know I'm a supplier, but sometimes we lose sight of that. You cannot sell long-term care. All you can do is remove the obstacles that allow people to buy and or apply is the better word to use. And and that's really what this whole webinar is all about. It's it's to get you back in that mindset. And I think the time is perfect We're coming to the end of the second quarter. Uh, and it, this is the time when you're supposed to reassess your goals for that you made at the beginning of the year and you know decide how you're going to alter your game plan for the second half of the year, if at all. And um, and this is the time to get back in touch with those fundamentals. And being the interviewer field underwriter should be right at the top of that list. All right. So here's the objectives for today. Um, how you make the most of that? Again, it, it's it, if you're not using your position as and it's a real true position. It's not something you're doing as a gimmick. But re, uh, being a field underwriter and interviewer is what your role is supposed to be. How to ask questions about health, health and finances that your prospects want to answer. So many times people say, well, I'm uncomfortable asking the questions about health and finances because you know it's so personal and the like. Not if you ask them properly. In fact, as an interviewer field underwriter, it's your obligation to gather that information. Never to try to sell an LTC solution. Instead, you want to ask the applicants the questions so they choose to apply, right? And again, it's a critical difference that we need to get back in touch with 
especially here mid, mid year when we're trying to focus on how we're going to produce more in the second half of 2022. I'm going to share with you some power phrases that I've learned from many of my specialists over the years uh, that will have your clients selling themselves and how you inoculate against objections before they even come up so that uh, you, you are in control the whole way through the interview. And at the, at the, uh, at the end of this, for the most part, I'm a big believer that this is a one-time call at the end of your first full interview. In other words, you should be able to take the application at the end of your first full interview. And if you're purposely pushing people into a second or third interview in order to take the application, it's much more about your own belief system than it is the belief system of your prospects. All right. So... Some basic rules I want you to have before we get into the, the nitty gritty of all this. One, this has been around forever, but again, somehow some of us lose sight of it. All objections die with agreement. Write that down if you haven't done that in a while. No matter what your client says to you, especially as an interviewer field underwriter, you need to agree with their position. I absolutely see where you're coming from. Makes perfect sense to me. I'm on board with what you're saying. You, you agree with the, whatever the objection might be because it diffuses the situation where, where uh, they want to become either argumentative or enter into a debate. You don't want that. So you just agree, and then you can move them to seeing uh, what, what it was you were sharing or saying through that discussion. Before I get on any interview, for 32 years now, I've said the second line on here. Ask, don't tell, interview, don't sell. Ask, don't tell, interview, don't sell. That's a mantra I say to myself, along with the third thing you see on here. Tune the world out and your prospect in. For the 90 minutes or so you're going to spend with that prospect, all the rest of the problems in your life, all the rest of the problems in the world can wait. Get, be focused in, on your prospect and hearing not only what he's saying or she's saying, but what's not being said, because there's lots going on underneath those words you need to listen for. If you really want answers, ask specifics. To many people, and to some of you, if I said to you, how much money do you have? You would say, none of your business. But if I were to say, hey, uh, Mr. And Mrs. Jones, do you own your house? Oh yes, we do. We, we, in fact, we paid the last mortgage payment just two months ago. Great, congratulations. Uh, how much do you think it's worth? Nobody will will push back on answering that question. A, it's public information. B, you ask the specific. The mind is trained to answer specifics. So don't ask general questions. Ask specifics, and you'll get your answer. And anything you want to share is much better posed as a question as opposed to uh, the statement that you would make to them. Because when you tell them, you're selling. When they tell you, they're buying. So you want to always put them in a position where they can be telling you. And here's a slide I added right at the last minute here. I just want to make sure, again, this is very fundamental stuff, but I want to make sure you have this in your mind. When you in initially engage someone, you, we got some background noise. If somebody can mute themselves, got a lot of paper shuffling or whatever. If When you first engage someone, thank you, um, you want to first focus on the solution. That's the first part of what you're all about. It's not product, it's not price, it's not uh, particular benefits or, or uh, riders or anything like that. It's first and foremost, what's the best solution for them? There's only three choices. They can self-insure, they can they impoverish themselves and depend on the government, or they can transfer the risk to a multi-million dollar long-term care insurance firm. That's it. Those are the three choices. And all you want them to do is make a decision as to which one is the best fit for them. I can share with you that 67% of the time with me, they choose to transfer the risk. Now, I've known from over history that about 80% of the people I speak to will decide to do something. That means 13% decided to do it with someone else. That's fine. I did my job if they decided on a solution. 
And that's that's got to be your objective in the first part of the presentation and, and that part of the interview. And that's what we're going to be concentrating on today. The second part is that you need to design for affordability. Now, again, uh, it doesn't matter how good your plan is, is if they're going to go in sticker shock when you um, uh, try to give them all the bells and whistles, or maybe they can afford all of it and should, you need to find that out in, av in advance of actually designing a plan. And uh, affordability is much more important factor than the product or the riders you give them yourself, because th and if, unless they think it's affordable, even if they apply for it, they're probably not going to keep it. So you, you, affordability has got to be your second objective. And then third, you're going to choose the product based on what you learn about their health and their finances. They're not choosing, you're choosing what you're going to present to them. You're the, you're the expert, you're in control. All right. And you're going to, after you learn more about their health and finances, you're going to design the product that they most likely would be the best fit for them and what they can qualify for. Okay. Let's talk about what happens before you meet, before you actually do the interview, the phone conversation that sets the interview up in the first place. First of all, as a field underwriter, you need to have a bunch of health and financial questions already written out. If you're not using a script, I mean, I'm, 32 years in the business and I wouldn't use a, I, I wouldn't get on the phone without a script in front of me. I know I'll be a half an inch or half a, a second faster and smoother as a result of it. But more importantly, I'm, I'm reminded of all the questions that I've, I've got in front of me that I wanna make sure I touch on. The object of any phone call, the initial phone call, is simply to get an appointment, nothing else. It's not to answer questions. It's not to give a quote, whether it's uh, exact or ballpark. It's not to identify a carrier. It's none of those things. It's simply to get an appointment. And if you're doing any of the rest of the things, you're hurting yourself more than helping yourself. Your purpose is to explain that you're a field underwriter, what your job is. They didn't expect that. They were expecting some insurance salesperson was gonna call them. You need to make sure they understand your role as a field underwriter. And you have to make sure that when you do meet with them for the, for the actual interview, all parties that are relevant are gonna be present. So the husband and wife both have to be there. There's no sense giving an, an interview to someone if both parties that are, are gonna be involved aren't present, because all they're gonna do is tell you they have to talk to the other person, right? And then finally, again, this is one of those things that's been around forever, but I want you to get back to it. This is the response to any question you get during the when you're setting up the interview to begin with that's exactly why i'm calling that's it whatever they say to you i just was looking to get some more information that's exactly why i'm calling i had sent you some additional information when you made the inquiry and we're going to set up a time so i can get you all the specific information that would help you make the best best decision now as i was saying have you been in the hospital the last five years and you're right back into your script all right no matter what they say, I just wanted to uh, get a price. That's exactly why I'm calling. Right? Whatever they say, that's your response and back to your objective on the phone script. Right? It, trust me, it doesn't have to make perfect sense to the client on the other end. They're just saying things to put up some roadblocks when the reality is they really want to know the information they came looking for. But to do that, they have to come to the interview. Okay. Now let's talk about the interview itself. All right. oh, everybody knows this first block. Tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them, uh, and then tell them what you told them. Uh, that is as old as, as uh, any presentation ever given and, or interview ever given, and you need to adhere to that. Right? Um, have an intro talk to introduce yourself. In 1991, I wrote the first intro talk that was used in long-term care at the time for Amex Life that went on to become Genworth and went on to become GE Capital. But I wrote the initial intro talk, and, I, and that's because I brought it from another business I had been in prior. And it has always proven to be the most effective tool in my arsenal. It goes something like this. Now, before I completely review the entire program with you and answer any questions you might have, I want you to understand that I'm not here today to sell you on the, on the idea of long-term care insurance. The fact that you sent back this card or made this inquiry or set this appointment tells me that you already have interest in learning more about this. My job is that of a field underwriter. I'm gonna ask you questions about your health and finances. Your job is to make the decision as to what of the many solutions that I have to offer, which one would be the best fit for you. 
if you decide that um, putting a solution in place makes sense, all I can do is help you make an application to see if you can get accepted. It's going to take six to eight weeks in most cases for us to find out if you can. If you are, they'll send the policy to me and I'll let you know that you've been approved. I'll then send it to you by two day mail. Once you receive it, we'll review it and you can make any changes you want in the first 30 days without having to go through underwriting again. So you'll be able to review it and, and you know follow up with any questions that you, that, that you might have. As we go through this, by the way, the only way I've built my practice is through um, other people that have come and got long-term care insurance for me who have told me about others they, might, they know that might benefit from it. So if along the way you, you think of somebody else that might benefit from this information, I'd sure appreciate if you'd share that with me. That's my intro talk, intro talk. You need to have an intro talk that you can deliver like that. Almost all answers to all questions lie in that intro talk. So make sure you've tuned yours up if you haven't been using a consistent and steady intro talk, right? Um, prospects are much more receptive when they understand what's going on. The intro talk is the rules of the game. That's all you're doing. You're saying, here's how this game is played. If you were to sit down with your children or grandchildren right now to play a game, you'd say, let's read the rules first if it was the first time you played. That's what you're sharing is the rules. They're much more likely to go along once they understand them. Always try to put their name, your prospect's name, on the cover page when they when they when they first tune into your webinar. I assume most of you are doing webinars. Make sure it is their name that they're seeing. Make sure you use a photo of yourself and say something self-deprecating. This is the photo I use on my interview, all right? And I always make a comment about my receding hairline and the fact that I'm thinking about selling advertising space up there. You'll be surprised how that immediately helps them let down their guard, laugh a little, but more importantly, you just see that you're not trying to be a high pressure, you know, used car salesperson, but, a, but someone who's truly interested and invested in them them so again um uh make sure that you, they never see me like now they see my pictures like this throughout the interview but they don't see they don't actually see me as we're as we're going through the webinar all right once i've given that intro talk i slip into this the purpose of this page is simple it is so i can share a brief underlying brief personal story of why I got into this business. And the reason for me was first my grandmother and then this guy, that's my dad, who suffered with Alzheimer's for six years before he passed. And they had long-term care. And I saw what a difference it made. And I, so I share that story with the, uh, the prospect as to why it is that I'm so passionate and motivated about doing this. But again, I keep it brief. All this as you can see in yellow there, is to lead to the question, have you ever had to be a caregiver to anyone or know anyone who has? I promise you for the vast majority of the people that you're going to speak to, that's the motivation for why they came looking. And you want them back in touch with whatever those emotions are as you go through this interview. So you ask that question, have you ever been uh, a caregiver to someone else or know someone who has and let them talk as, and ask questions about what they share with you from an interviewer field underwriter perspective because that's what you need to do is to understand their motivations now once i have uh, a, a better understanding of why they did this i remember i'm an interviewer field underwriter i have to validate that this is not some sales trick I need to say, do what exactly what I said. I said I was going to interview them to their health and finances. So I start out by interviewing them to their health and finances. Here's a few boxes of some of the uh, different conditions. The one in dark blue are the ones that will knock you out immediately. I know you don't have them because when I spoke to you on the phone, you shared with me that none of these were things that you were dealing with. This, the ones in the lighter blue are the ones you can potentially have and at, but as long as they're under control, we might be able to indeed find a solution for you. So again, I, I go right into the same questions I asked on the phone. Have you been in the hospital the last five years? What for? What, are you taking any prescription medications? 
what for? Um, have you had any history with heart attack, stroke, diabetes, or cancer? Do you get along? Do you get around okay? Have either one of your parents had a cognitive impairment? Who, how long, did they need care? That kind of stuff. You're into truly interviewing and finding out and then building new questions on their answers, right? And then the other part I shared with you that I need to find out a little bit more is your, is, your, is whether or not this is financially suitable. Every state has suitability guidelines. All right. And so what they say is you should have at least 40 to 50,000 in household income and at least 100,000 in, in assets. Does that sound like your situation? Yes. Well, not really. You know, I have I have more than that in savings, but I, I don't know if uh, if indeed, you know, I'm more real estate, more heavily invested in real estate. And I'm not that look, whatever they're going to tell you, you just need to find out. Right. Always start with the house with if you have to get into specifics, because that's something they're comfortable sharing. But as they buy the fact that you're an interviewer field underwriter, there should never be any resistance on this. And we'll get back to that in, in the future slides here. Um, important facts to know about long-term care. So I give them a quick review of some of the things they need to know. Long-term care is something that's 90 days or longer. Again, you know this stuff. I want to make sure they understand how they access the policy, what kind of tax benefits are available to them, um, where they can pay, how they can use tax-free money to pay for this, what they might be able to deduct, et cetera, so that we, so they have some information they didn't have when we first got on this call. All right, I'll talk to them about Medicare and Medicaid, things like that as well. All right, here's where I say to them, now here's where you make your first decision. Mr. and Mrs. Jones, I wish I could keep you from getting sick, but I can't. I don't have that power. What I can do is help you put a stream of income in place that will allow you to deal with the consequences of it if something ever happens to you or your loved ones. The choices in front of you are, as we discussed, uh, two major ones. One, you can choose to approach this like you do all your other insurances, like your homeowners and your auto insurance, and just lease a policy because that's what you're doing with those other policies, you're leasing them, right? And you know, each year you have to renew that. Or you can approach this by saying, I'm not gonna pay a premium, I'm simply gonna transfer some assets from one account to another so that I will have a plan in place in case I ever need long-term care. And either way, you have to be able to health qualify for the solution you choose. So here's the first, uh, choices you have in front of you, and I simply take them through what the pros and cons are of traditional long-term care, right? And, you know, again, uh, it's going to give them the most leverage for their dollars, and the fact that uh, if, if they don't use it, they're, they're not going to see a benefit from it, so they need to, to, to understand that, but that's true about their homeowners and their, and their uh, auto insurance, too, so that, that shouldn't be anything foreign to them. And that there is the risk of a rate increase when they're paying for an annual policy. Okay. Then I take them through the pros and cons of the hybrid. Again, uh, emphasizing um, that this is just a transfer of assets. The money always remains in their name. There's no rate increases. That can, that's possible. They're, they're basically by transferring the assets. This is the program that's best for them if they're looking to self-insure. If indeed they're inclined to want to to make an approach this way. Here's the problems with these plans. Not as much leverage as traditional. Not everybody has a lump sum they can transfer. And I ask them, which one of these two plans makes the best sense for you? If they say, oh, I like the hybrid, I know which way to go. If they say, no, I think the traditional is better, great, that's why there's no bad decision here. I just wanna know which direction I should take them. If they say, I don't know, very, if it's a sincere, I don't know, I very well might say to them, okay, then we'll look at both and we'll see which one gives you the best value, the most value for your, for your dollar, right? Once I say that, I, this is the exception to the one call close thing. Once I say that, in all likelihood, I've set this up for a second um, interview in order to take the application. Because if we're gonna go through two different choices, they're gonna tell me they wanna digest both before they decide. But I'm gonna make sure that, that it's a solid commitment to making an application before we set up that second time. But, but it's only when I get that. If I get a, a clear direction, which I will more than half the time, 
as to whether or not they want to go with hybrid or they want to go with traditional. We're writing the application that day. There's absolutely no reason not to. I show them exactly how they trigger the policy that it's their doctor, not the uh, uh, insurance company's doctor, and um, what it takes to uh, to actually make a claim. And everything leads up to this question. All right, this is this is the super closed question, if whatever you want to call everything that you talk about in the first 30 minutes or so in your interview with them leads to this question. Can you think of any reason why long-term care protection wouldn't make sense for you and your family? Yes or no, right? And I wait for the answer, right? And then what the question mark resembles is the most important part of this particular slide. Why? Why? Guys, this is it right here. If you've given them the information and they clearly see the choices in front of them, self-insure, depend on the government, or transfer the risk, they can make a decision as to which way makes sense for them. And if they can't make that decision, you haven't done your job well enough and there's absolutely no reason to proceed. You need to get first focused on this. 99% of the time they make a decision and the answer is yes, I can see why this can be a benefit to me. Good, doesn't mean a thing unless you ask the why. Now, what haven't I done? I haven't shown them a product. I haven't shown them a price. I haven't shown them anything to do with the actual coverage, but I'm asking them, of the three solutions that we've gone through and the information that you have, can you think of any reason why long-term care protection wouldn't make sense for you and your family? No, I can't. Well, why is that? Well, again, as soon as they answer the question, it's over, it's done. They've told you that they've looked and long-term care insurance makes the most sense for them, here's why. It doesn't matter how they answer, it just matters that they can answer. And if they answer it with a strong, you know, enthusiastic commitment to their answer, fine. And if they don't, you need to explore that. But again, it had nothing to do with price or product. They had to decide what was the best solution for them. If they decide they're going to self-insure, I'm fine with that. If they decide that they're going to, to depend on the government, I'm fine with that, as long as they do it with their eyes wide open. I'm confident that the vast majority will choose to transfer the risk. And as a field underwriter and interviewer, that's what I'm invested in, not whether they make the application, but if they did they make the decision on how they were going to handle this risk. That's what my job's all about. Everything else takes care of itself, right? They've also given me the license to become assumptive. Once they answer this question with yes and why or no and why, well, there's no reason for me to assume that they're not going to make an application. So everything I say to them from this point forward is going to start with, as we're waiting to hear back on your application, one, once we uh, get the approval on your application, I'm going to assume they're going to make an application because they just told me that this is the best solution for them and why. I cannot overstate the importance of everything you do in the first half of your interview leading to this question. Almost all long-term care specialists will ask the first part of this question, but they don't ask the why. And the why is the most important part of this entire. Understanding their why is what motivates them to take action. Not better bed reservation benefits or, or um, hospice care or anything like that. This question is what motivates them to make an application. So again, at the heart of all this, it's the lead to this question. Write it down, put it in your interview, make sure you have it, and don't forget to ask the why. Now, this is the first part of what I teach over a couple of days and what at FBS, what we teach um, over a four-day training course. All right. And what we were talking about the golden uh, care people and myself were talking about right before we started this is whether or not we're going to put together a second uh, webinar that will take you through the second half 
of the uh, presentation or the interview, and I think that's on in the agenda. I just not sure yet what the date is because next week is a holiday weekend, so it'll probably be the week after. But I will leave that to the Golden Care people, and we will be back in touch with every one of you when uh, that time comes. I'm ready to open it up to any kind of questions or answers, Jeff. All right, Mark. Great job. Great points in there. Great tips in there. I love it. Uh, let's see what we have here. Um, all right. Well, as usually, I want to know if they'll copy this PowerPoint, which I think we have no problem with, right, Mark? We can, we can give them a couple pointers yeah, here. I said that we make it available to anybody affiliated with Golden Care or FBS. Yeah, sure. Right, right, right. Yeah. And so, yeah, we'll, we usually just send it out as a copy of the PowerPoint itself with your uh, recording. Um, sure. No, at this point, there isn't. I think they were just so busy uh, taking some of that stuff in and probably taking some notes, et cetera. Um, yeah, great sleep. stuff. Which one, Jeff? Uh, I don't think so. You know what, Mark? I mean, I, I've been doing long-term care for 25 years now. Uh, I've written about 800 policies, and I still pick up that. Well, if you're smart in this industry, you always know you can pick up a new something new every time if you just listen. But, but a lot of good pearls of wisdom in there, a lot of good tips. You know, we are certainly trying to do for the interviewer. We're not trying to sell them anything. We're trying to walk them through the process to help them maybe obtain this coverage. We're basically nothing more than a, I don't know, a, a, an instrument along the way. So that's like kind of if you take it that way, you take the pressure off them. Yeah. yeah. People love to buy things. They don't like to be sold something. So again, all you want to do right. is remove those obstacles and let them apply as opposed to try to sell them on anything. It's a, it's a subtle, yep. and people know it, and they give lip service to it, but then they completely forget about it when they get into the to the heat of of the discussions, and they revert back to being super salesperson, and that's that destroys all their credibility when they do. Well, I like to ask, don't tell, and interview, don't sell. Yeah, I mean, so much times we don't we go right past those objections, we go right past the things that they want to say because we're so busy trying to say all the things that we think we need to say. So, you know, it's very important to listen. I think we all know that sales 101, but um, in such a way, yes, you're interviewing. Listen to them. Let them say what they're looking for. Yeah, yeah but, that's, but that's the truth. We get so caught up in what we're saying that we're forgetting that it's much more about listening to what they're saying. And, yeah, uh, yeah. and that's what an interviewer does. That's the difference. You, you, it's not enough to say you're an interviewer field underwriter. You have to prove it, and you prove it by your actions, by yeah, how you approach it. And you, if you spend 30 minutes or so delving into their health and their finances and you show real interest in their answers, you're going to be an interviewer field underwriter. And if you treat it like you just want to rush through that part so you can get to the product benefits and features in quotes because you think that's where the decision is made, well, not only are you sorely mistaken, but you've completely ruined your, your positioning as an a interviewer and field underwriter. Right. And you know, all of you, all of you guys, obviously understand this. A lot of this stuff has been um, carefully diagnosed and analyzed over the years. Mark, 32 years, that's 25. We do put a lot into these powerpoints and what to say and how to say it. Sometimes, if you're out there presenting and you're not having any luck, I always tell agents, you know what? Maybe just change your approach a little bit. And so, those of you that are on here, maybe that's what you're trying to do. But it's always wise to kind of uh, improve your craft in any way you can. So that's why we're glad you guys came on today. And so Mark's so thankful for you uh, sharing your your thoughts. You know, Mark's just happy to teach people. You know, he, he's got his agency, he's got his agency, he's got things going on. But if you ever talk to Mark, he's very passionate about long-term care and, and how to get these things, uh, um, help people out. So Mark, that came across today, I appreciate your uh, enthusiasm. Uh, and Thank we you. will try to do a second part because I, I sure enjoyed it. I think it's worthwhile. Um, in the second phase, what do we kind of call that, Mark? Moving into the uh, taking the application phase, what are we call that? Well, first, first we're going to move into the affordability and the finance uh, part, and then we're going to review uh, the decisions they need to make in, in helping me design the best coverage for them, and then and then we're going to okay. go into the into uh, what you do. All right. To not only take the app, but what happens after you take the app, because this is not taking right. the app is just another step in the process. It's not a big deal. We tend to make it a big deal. Right. But it's it's not it's just Super. another step. It it's, it's what you do after you take the app that's more important in many cases. So lots of power questions to ask then. Some really good questions that will, will be helpful to people that have, again I've learned from other specialists over the years. And it'll be my pleasure if you decide you want to do that. Yeah, we'll do something. We'll probably get it scheduled next week is a holiday week, so we'll probably look at something the week after the even the week after that. I don't need to speak for Lynn's got a pretty busy schedule and webinar and getting it all uh, advertised and set up. So I don't want to speak for her, but I think we'll try to get that on the board uh, maybe right after the week of the fourth there, uh, sometime okay. in that week or maybe the following. Um, 
It'd probably be another half hour, short and sweet. I love that, Mark. I think the best length for webinars is about a half hour like this one. I'm not getting a lot of questions other than we'll get a copy here. So that's that's good news. Uh, let me just make sure here. Let me pop this out. Yeah, I just uh, warned okay. him that using well, the copy. Here's a couple the more. Couple, got a couple things here. Oh, I guess just thanks, sir. Actually, got, it was great. Refresher, thank you. Great job, Mark. Thank you for sharing your wisdom with us. So just a bunch of thank yous and accolades. So. Well, thank you for that. So, yeah, we'll get that scheduled, folks. Yeah, yeah. Well, this was good stuff, and I think it's worth to do another one. So we'll do the second half of this, if you will. Look for an advertisement. Look on our webinar schedule. Uh, of course, you know on goldencareagent.com, we have pre-recorded trainings for all this stuff, uh, all of our webinars and topics, whether it's product or selling or objections or closing a sale or pivots or all that stuff can be found at goldencareagent.com along with all the product stuff. But mainly, just know to reach out to us. If you have any, any uh, prospects or anything you want to bounce off us, Anything you're working on, give us a call. 800-842-7799 is our number. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and close her up, Mark. Thanks a lot. And we'll get you scheduled here in a couple of weeks to come and do the second part. Thank you, Jeff, for that ninja title. Nobody's ever called me a ninja before. so The long-term care ninja. Absolutely. Um, the deadly assassin, right? Yeah, that sounds a little harsh, but, you know, as far as making sales. How about that? With a smile. Thank you, Jeff. Okay. All right. Thank well, thanks. You. Thanks, everybody. And uh, we'll uh, keep selling. Call us if you need us. Thanks Thank a lot. Bye-bye. Check out our website, goldencareagent.com, or give us a call at 800-842-7799.